What is going on, good people? I'm here with Patrick Fountain City Painting Co. Uh, business breakthrough. Patrick, you called the meeting, man. Let's dive into it. I want to hear a little bit about your business. What's going on? What's the trajectory? What's not going well? Lay it on me, man. Sure thing. So, like, just to get into it, I think, so, like, my background, I think, is fairly similar to yours in that, like, my dad had a painting company, so I grew up painting did restaurant management and stuff like that all through college got into wow, dining for a bit yeah and then yeah. sold cars for a few years and wow. then started this uh technically about three years ago like i filed for everything but i really wasn't doing too much dove into it last year uh yeah. was on the tools actually quite a bit last year getting like okay. production rates down and, and just kind of easing into it and then this year kind of really trying to go a little more full board and just trying to grow a little bit and so right. i'm my revenue is growing my sales are growing leads are growing starting to hit a little bit of a bottleneck with production um i think just the plan that i had had for production going forward seemed like a really good idea but now it's just kind of squeezing me a little bit so okay. i'm just not plan? quite sure yeah what was the so what was the plan so my plan was to basically hire like not super apprentice program the way like nick slavic does it but something similar so like hiring folks who haven't been painting for 25 years coming in with bad habits like hiring my w2 employees who have a little bit of experience training them up on like the operating procedures that we have kind of written down the way that we're training them and then using subs for any overflow and exterior stuff. But now it's coming, like I'm getting so much interior stuff and cabinet jobs coming in that like, I just don't have the W2 capacity to have these jobs produced in the timeline that I want them to. So instead of being able to have two or three jobs going in a week, I have one job going in a week. And then once, because like I'm in Kansas City, so we're starting, we're like we're real close to exterior season. So I could have a W-2 crew inside, a sub crew working outside. And that I'm not super worried about, but like my interior stuff is just hammering on us more than I anticipated, which is a good thing. But it's just trying to get it done in the time that I need to get it done and getting my scheduling right. Yeah, that's that's a challenge is pacing the jobs, um, right. getting us to a point where, you know, ultimately the team you can rely on and actually project the time frames and be right. And, you know, I know that's frustrating, man, because you got to have tight time frames. I want to ask what the leadership looks like on the job. Uh, what does the team look like? How many people and who's leading the team? Uh, two right now and me. Okay. I have one, um, I have somebody who's trained up and, and I'm going to be pretty comfortable with them leading the jobs uh, with, you know, if it's an interior repaint and all we're doing is like we have a job next week. All it is is walls. It's a new, not a new house, but somebody who's just bought it. They're closing today. Just walls, no big deal, kind of in and out. They can is handle that production. To assume that in most cases, you're taking on bigger interior jobs, 75% of the house or more? Yes. Why are you, why are you only, why do you only have two people aside from yourself? Because you're leaving doing estimates and running into business mm -hmm. and then you're leaving two people in there. What's the thought process behind having two people instead of three or four it was just staggering my hiring and getting the training done okay i think you're so overthinking like, because the these cats didn't because these cats are still fairly new coming in and one of them just came on just a few weeks ago oh, so yeah. yeah you're overthinking this training thing i think you gotta i think so i too. could i think you're trying to make it perfect like looking at an example like nick i think mm -hmm in a position where training can be a focus you're trying to train people and i've been using this analogy lately about like a nascar race how it's just moving you know mm -hmm. it's always going and like the only training you can do is in the pit stop dude like you just don't have the luxury to step back and train and that will happen in time i love the idea yeah. but even at my stage right now doing two million like we're cranking like the training has to happen on the job by people that know what they're doing. And there could be a guideline built on the job, but you need people that can train. You need people that are good at what they do and no time frame and no flow Two people on a full interior. You're burning out your team. That's probably yeah. what's happening. There's no way I I've painted an interior by myself once and I didn't want to pick up a paintbrush for two weeks after that. So, yeah. you know, and you too. I know you, you're probably exhausted. So 
you know, in terms of leadership, like you said, okay, well, I have this guy that I'm thinking about elevating to a leader on the job. Tell me about him. Not too much painting experience, um, you know, probably about six months or so before he came to me. Does fine. Uh, if, if it's just walls, I'm I'm totally comfortable. It's when we got to go in and, and like spray out trim, spray out ceilings, and it's the cabinet jobs. So he's that not I'm able to do it. You're doing it. I'm doing the spraying right now, yeah. Right. Which I need to get See, out of. That, that, you can't, I mean, okay, you can't have a crew leader that can't do that, dude. Like, right. it, and he doesn't need to be the best at it. Like, I, one of my things is, is that you want someone that's a good people person, but they have to know how to do all the elements of the paint job. Mm. That's baseline crew leader, or else you're yeah. going to run into the position where you have to keep filling the gaps. Which is why I kind of wanted to get your. And I, I assume I know what your answer is going to be. Is just like start. So like I've had super good luck with going on going on Indeed for my banners. Like I get really good quality. So it's just changing that well, you have, that job form well, up to the, changing, yeah changing the job form up to get a crew leader now instead of training one up. Just hiring somebody who can kind of step into that role. I think you need to identify what Fountain City painting what the model is, right? Cause it seems as though you guys take on high end residential, which I'm sure you do. Yeah. And you take on bigger jobs, right? And right. one of the things that you need to think of as a leader, I'm assuming this might be your first business that you own generally Correct. is, is gauging the exhaustion level of your team and putting them in positions to, to, to feel valued, right. And to feel appreciated and, and supporting them to win. Right. You think of yourself as a head coach, dude, like you're, you, you have a big opponent and you're putting in people that are, you know, you're putting two people in there when, if you had four people working on the job, you're going to make less money. Okay. But what you're doing is, is that you're creating a more efficient process and you need to be okay with that. Like you got to yeah. be okay with the fact that you bring on two people right now. You're not going to be making as much money as you are now, but what that's doing is it's creating a culture, right? So you can go up to four, which I think is the max and then get them working with each other, create that culture. You stop painting, dude. Like you yeah. won't get anywhere until you agree with that. Like you got to stop. I fully agree. You need yeah. to find, so you need to figure out first, like I got to replace myself. And I think here's a deal, man. Like, Again, one of the most important things you could do is not overpromise. I don't know this. I'm just going to ask. Did you already promise this person a crew leader position? No. Okay. So you're in a position where good, like you can bring someone in who has experience. How do you feel like the two individuals that you have in your business would react to you bringing in someone else to be their boss on the job? I don't think it would be a problem because uh, they didn't come. No, I didn't bring either one of them on with, like you just said, like nobody had a promise of you're going to be a crew leader within six months yeah. or anything like that. Like, we have, I, I set up like quarterly reviews and quarterly goals. Like we want you to hit these milestones as far as like getting raises and stuff like that. But there was no like promise of you're getting this specific title yeah. and these specific yeah. responsibilities after this time. So bringing in somebody position. else. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the deal. What I want you to do is I want you to get that crew leader and I want you to stop painting the, you you have a training ground right now. You have to understand it. And, and many people don't get this. Not many people get the opportunity to run a painting business with very little or sorry, a profitable business with very little investment up front, right? Dude, you can make a hundred grand this year and you barely put in any money into this endeavor aside from your operating costs that come from profit, right? Yeah. So there's got to be a time period where you dig deep and you invest. And I think like for me, if I were in your position, if I were consulting you, I'd say, hey, let's get four painters on this job and we need two people that know what the heck they're doing, right? right. You already have people that are character, good character. You need someone mm -hmm. that knows how to, how to run a job. Um, so I think you know this, just reaffirming it. Yes, indeed is where you want to yeah. go. You want to put out that you're looking for a crew leader. And in your hiring process, we want to make sure that we can replace you. And I also think that you should stop taking cabinets. Pick one, house painting or cabinets. Yeah, because we have my what I was wanting to do is hit exteriors, hit cabinets. And we just happen to run into interiors. Like I don't market for these interiors. Are two, we these just are two totally different businesses. 
And yeah. we might, and this is a problem that I see so much is that we're, we're, we're mixing the two, right? So you have apprentices expected to prep and paint cabinets, which you can't do because now you're doing them, right? Right. The same amount of time that you're spending putting together that show is the same amount of time you could be doing another full interior with the same resources, a lot less stress, and you not feeling like you need to do everything. I agree. It's the same money. It's just you generally speaking, like if you put your two guys on a cabinet job, generally speaking, the average cabinet job is going to be four to 6,000, right? Yeah. About five to six for us. Yeah. Five to six stress level yep. one to 10, right? What would you say? Stress level on a cabinet job one to 10, six, seven, six, seven, sometimes yeah. depending picky customer. Yeah. Right. Touch ups, right. missed expectations, prep wasn't perfect, uh, runs on doors, all these elements, right? House painting job, five grand, six grand for the week, five day job. Same, same time, stress level. Much lower. Three. Much lower. If you yeah. feel like your stress level six as a as a business owner, imagine what the painters feel. Mm. They're not even getting the profit, dude. So, so the thing about it is, is again, like you're in a stage right now where you have resources. I would pick which one you're going to do either go all in on cabinets or all in on house painting. It's confusing the team. It's making more work for you and you're not making any more money than you would if you just picked one. Personally. Yeah. So then I could, do you know how hard it's going to be to find somebody that can finish cabinets on indeed? Do you think someone with skill set to finish cabinets is sitting on Indeed? Probably not as easy as finding a house painter. 100%. Yeah. Build that first. Get that scaled. Get that to where you're doing at least two crews of full house painting jobs week after week after week. Then you want to add on a little cabinet team of two? Go for it, dude. But you got to systemize one of these things first. Just That's a if huge I can bottleneck, see. dude. Yeah. So systemize out house painting, get that going. And then once I'm flowing and I'm good and I've got my revenue, I've got my systems down on and that, then if I want to branch back into cabinets at that time, I've got more time to set those systems, yeah. set that training and have the house painting essentially on autopilot by that time. Remember this. It's an entirely different business. Mm -hmm. You are trying to run two businesses with three people. There's a different yeah. process for production. There's a different process for sales and there's a different process for marketing by all categories. This categorizes itself as an entirely different business endeavor, right? And you're trying to split those resources into two different directions and it's causing chaos, right? Cause you and I both know if you just did house painting, that would cut your physical demand to be present by 75%. Yes, absolutely. And that's what we need to do. We need to get you out so you can focus on vision, sales, marketing, recruiting for four major areas that need someone focusing on it full time and scheduling. If you're knee deep in a job, how hard is it for you to figure out that schedule when customers are asking when you're going to be starting their job? Like scheduling at, at this stage that I'm at requires full time eyes at, at this stage. Mm -hmm. I'm at 2 million in revenue, right? So it requires someone sitting there just making sure schedule is up to date. People are being updated. We're tapping into the crews, figuring out when they're going to be done so we can update our customers and have superb communication. Right? So again, man, like you are valuable everywhere else, but that job, let's systemize the easy jobs that you're easily getting. So you have apparently you have no problem finding work. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. We've actually been pretty lucky the last few months for sure. It's really been growing our lead flow. Lucky. Anything that's lucky. We need to capitalize well, on the momentum. Lucky, of, no, yeah. I'm just saying capitalize on that. Make sure you find a system. What are you doing for marketing? Uh, Facebook and Google LSAs have been our biggest. Who's and then we've got Facebook? a good, uh, nobody, but I hired, I'm started with somebody yesterday. So Okay, I've been so, doing it myself and having success, but now I'm going into the the paid monthly marketing specialized for painters. Good. You found somebody that yep. does marketing for painters. Good. Okay. Cool. That's exciting. Yeah. So I would give you some advice on that. Um, video, man. That's something I'm trying to just push mm -hmm. out, man. Get yourself on that camera. Show that team doing work. Get people to know you through that video and you will have abundant results, um, you know, in your endeavor. 
Yeah. Yeah, because that, that stuff has been working really well. And then some of the just terrestrial marketing stuff that we've been doing. So, like, I was in Brandon Lewis's Painter Academy and doing all, like, the realtor referral stuff. Like, that's how I'm running into so many of these interiors that I hadn't even been marketing. Yeah, is beautiful. I'm getting all these realtors. And those are, Kate, like, those are great jobs because it's like, hey, these people are moving in next week. House is empty. It's yours if you want it. It's like, yeah, I want it. Let's go. Yeah. So now once I have these crews optimized and we can really start knocking these full interiors out when the house is empty, it's almost a new construction site. Like we just go in there, cover the floors and paint it. And then half the time they're replacing yeah. carpeting. It's, and you light those, up. Those jobs yeah. I don't think you get as excited on cabinet jobs. I get excited about the idea of cabinet jobs, but the actual like, <laughs> let's go rock out this production <laughs> on interiors. Yeah. And exteriors yeah. too. Like exteriors, we can knock yeah. out an exterior, a pretty decent house in four days. Like, yeah. Well, you got to realize running... competition is doing what you're doing. Right. And I think it's good to have cabinets in your back pocket for the winter. I'm not saying that this is something that you shouldn't invest in. I'm just saying it's not time. Like you got to systemize one first and then go back. Cause it's, it's not fair to your team. Cause they're expecting one thing and they're getting this other thing. That's not as, it's right. not comparable. Like generally speaking, if I were working for a painting company and I went from painting houses to painting cabinets, I would probably ask for more money when painting cabinets. It's so much harder. Right. It's more labor intensive. Like it's not really fair for them to get the same rate. I mean, yeah, especially if they're doing all the finished work because I don't want to be the one doing all the finished work. Well, that's what we're projecting. I'm not factoring you into any of this because you really shouldn't exactly, be doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so yeah. what, what else, man? Let's pivot. I know that – so we talked a little bit about production. One of your big questions or just kind of ideas was, hey, man, production's like – really just kind of like bottlenecking and i think it might be because we're going from cabinet to interior to interior to cabinet i also think that you need a bigger team i think it's time hire two people without worrying about how much it costs so you can because yeah. here's the thing i've been in business long enough dude you need that learning curve you need to you need to you need that feedback loop right so someone that you might need a hire for two weeks from now you need two weeks to vet the person that you bring in it takes two to three weeks to really nail, nail down a great hire, you know? Yeah. So that needs to be done today. Yep. I need to just get my, I've got my Indeed ads. Are you confident in your hiring process? Like, do you really feel like it's like you have it nailed down? I, don't, I mean, I think so. I mean, you can always get better at it, uh, just like anything else. But what like, I've it? got, I've I want got, to hear it. What is your hiring process? Yeah, so I've, I've, just, I've got the Indeed at, uh I've got the job descriptions on there. I try to put a little bit of friction in there. So like answer these, you know, answer these questions, not just send me your resume. So like half the time I'm getting people who don't even answer the question. So cool, you're out. And then it's just evaluating what those answers are, try to whittle that down. And then I schedule, you know, if I get um, 50 applicants, I'll do maybe 15, 20 phone interviews and then narrow that down to like four or five in-person interviews. And okay. then kind of go from there. And then I, I still like run all the background checks and all that stuff, like set up through my gusto. So we're vetted as best as I can right now on my hiring process. But Good. And I of think, course there's always think, room for improvement for any of that. But, and also yeah. I've been hit, I've been, I had been hammering out people who, you know, there's not a, a ton of experience requirements for it. So that would have to be changed up as well at this time. Yeah. I just want you to kind of just make sure that you keep the mindset of, I am a sales and marketing company first. And yeah. in order to in order to to really be a great sales and marketing company, like the sales and marketing what you're doing, it has to be it has to be happening at all times, right? Like the the ads should always be running. The the ads for hiring should always be on. You should mm -hmm. always be looking for building that team because the sales on the other side, we should always be pouring money into marketing and sales, right? So they can collide and you're never at a position where one is outgrowing the other. Like you're kind of just kind of chasing that. Now here's the interesting part and this is why it's not as easy as it sounds, right? Because you, and you know this is the fact that the matter is is that we're selling a, a skilled trade, which means that you can't just bring someone in expecting them to produce a result. There's a certain level of skill required to give someone a good result. So sales continues. In this case, it's not just bringing in people, man. It's making sure that you're getting someone that has the qualifications. And that's why I go back to my point of start with house painting because your labor pool is going to be so much bigger than it is trying to get someone to come refinish cabinets. That takes time. 
And it, I get the market for people that know how to paint or want to get into painting is tremendous. I'm sure you've seen that on Indeed. You probably get quite yeah. a bit oh, of that. Yeah. I was, yeah, you know? I was actually pretty surprised when I put those first ads out at, at how many yeah. pretty good so, applicants that I was getting. So you're starting to see consistent jobs come through. You're starting to see, and here's a good thought. You might want to take a sub crew and have the sub crew only do exteriors, right? If you still want to find that balance mm. and then yes. your, your W2 crew might just do interiors. Now here's the deal. What is the fountain painting interior production model? Let's say you want to scale this thing, right? You want to get to a point where you have a couple locations. There's got to be systems in place for that, right? And you're going to oversee that. You're going to say, okay, you know, how many painters do we want on a job? What is our optimum amount of painters? And what is the skill sets they possess, right? So you would say painter A at this rate should know how to do all aspects of job management. That's assigning people to certain tasks. That's painting everything from top to bottom. That's proper wall preparation. That's proper trim, uh, trim painting. That's proper everything, right? So he's A. And then B is an apprentice uh, that graduated to level B. And that's somebody that can cut roll, that could spray if needed, that supplements the crew leader. And then you have apprentice, which is learning all aspects of the trade. What do they get paid? How do we recruit them? What ads do we put for those individuals? So you should have three different ads, right? Generally speaking, you should be nurturing people from apprentice to, uh, to crew helper and then to crew leader. And then eventually you don't really need to seek out crew leaders. You grow them from within. Yeah. And it's, you're just at a point. Idea. Right. Yeah. You, so what other questions? And, you have, man? Like, you know? Yeah. Because that kind of just like last thing on this, like that, was kind of like the plan that I had it sounds to start. Right. But what it is, is I just don't have the luxury of doing that right now. That's something that I need to grow into, like have the good crews that I can send out now, not really have to worry about imagine being how much fun teaching. sales becomes, right? Wait till you yeah. imagine how much fun sales is when you just know that you have like a special ops unit that you're just going to send in and they're going to get the mission done and get out. Right. It's yeah. the best. <laughs> So let me, so like, I do have another question for you and like, it's still okay. production and employee based in, in, uh, but like to get your opinion on it. So like, I know that you are for the most part, like just a W2 guy, which I fully understand. And I want good W2s. I have some really good sub crews that hit these exteriors and it's awesome. So like, would you recommend just having like four guys that can be one crew split them off into two crews on smaller interiors as w2s and then keep some subs for exteriors or just having these w2 painters just rocking both honestly man like i think one thing that's great about the w2 model is that i have full control man and i love yeah. i love i love to know who what when where and how because i just trans i just transfer that confidence to my customer I know who's going to be there. I know what they're thinking. I know how they're going to do it. I know where they're going to do it. And that is our process and standard. And I have a tight grip on that. There's no guessing. There's no, hey, I can't make it today. Or, hey, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm two of my guys called out. There's none of that crap, right, yeah. that I don't have to deal with because our brand is so strong. I just know that I have leverage over someone that's subbing out jobs. I know it. Why? Because I spent the time building teams. It takes longer. I wasn't in it early on to skyrocket my sales. I was in it to make sure that it's going to be a long lasting business. And I'm not saying that the sub model doesn't work. I'm just saying that the sub model presents more headaches than I personally have to deal with when it comes to keeping promises. Now you could find an amazing sub crew. I'm not saying that that's not true. You totally could. I'm just saying it's rare, you know, but if you yeah. landed on one, Right. If you landed on one, capitalize on it. You know, if I had a crew of four that showed up every time, I knew every one of those individuals. I know their quality. I know their standard. They communicate well. They value working for me. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, w I wouldn't say no. You know, I wouldn't say no. It'd, it'd be a lot easier than finding four people and putting together a crew leader at this stage yeah. of my business. I wouldn't say no, but they would have to operate to our standard. They'd have to do it exactly the way that they would if they were employees, and we would be monitoring yeah. that. Especially having a crew like that, like to handle overflow to that you might be getting on exteriors. But do you have, and maybe I'm just overthinking this part, in, in premium painting, for example, do you have dedicated interior crews and dedicated exterior? Is everybody just like, we're on interiors this week, next week, this crew's on exteriors? That's one of the coolest parts of, of doing both is that they get a break 
We just had, we just, one of my crews just got done doing an interior and they're just kind of burnt out on that. Now they get to work outside, right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So like, uh, you know, in, in some parts of the country, you're going to deal with higher end interiors here in Florida. You know, we just, we just paint texture. So, but like some, you know, the skill sets could definitely vary. I won't say that it doesn't, but here, uh, where we are, I mean, the interior standard doesn't require like specialists. It's mostly just people that know how to paint. So for us, we balance them both and it's great. It's good for them. Definitely. Yeah. And that's what I would point. Cause like, I remember back in college when I was just an employee on a painting company, like we're inside one you week, we're outside one right. week. And yeah. It's great. It's good balance. It's good for the yeah. psyche. And the skills <laughs> translate pretty easily too, between those two. When you're just talking yeah, about painting and you're not you doing the first, yeah. The first six months of my business, uh, I didn't take any interior jobs. I only did exterior because our team was just a bunch of apprentice level uh, individuals and I just wasn't yeah. confident in their ability to paint interior. So I just took exterior because you can get away with a couple more things on the outside. So that's kind of yeah. how we did it. Yeah. Yep. And we're, we're start because we're like where we are here, like here in another two or three weeks, we're just going to be hammering exteriors on a weekly basis. Like we've got them kind of starting to stack up now. So and when I'm like, obviously like I just got with this uh, marketing company, so we'll get together and do our onboarding and our strategy like early next week, I think it is. But I'm curious about like, so if we're just going to, cause I think you're right about the cabinet deal, like just kind of put that off until we're ready as a company to, to hit those systems kind of down the road. Like, should we just be focusing on marketing exterior painting and then we'll just handle the interiors that come along? As far um, as just hyper focusing on your marketing message, like what you're sending out there. No, I think that, you know, that'll just confuse you. That'll just limit you. Um, I think, you know, you should just, you should run two different ads. I think people see painting as painting and generally, um, but just have exterior ads, like especially with a, a, a place that's seasonal. Um, one thing that, that works really well is relevant ads, right? Like, so the first thing that comes to my mind, Patrick, would be like, Hey, you know, Kansas City, I don't know where you're at, but Kansas City homeowners, it's exterior season. Let's go, you know, like, and just say, hey, it's time to start thinking about painting the outside of your house. We want to be those painters for you. Here's how easy it is to get a quote. This is our team. This is our crew leader. Like, dude, you could really go nuts with relevant ads like that. And then do another ad. Hey, Kansas City people, we are your premier interior painters. You know, and we do this. So like, <clears throat> you never really know, but... <clears throat> You have a unique um, position to use the seasonal uh, element to create relevance in the ads. Yeah. Okay, cool. Relevant ads work. Like, they're, you know, people read, like, see that and be like, oh, it is exterior season. Like, you just reminded them, we know it's exterior season, but the market doesn't. Like, they don't, they don't see it that way. They just know it's getting warm out. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yep. And we're starting to get starting like the organic demand for exterior starting to pile up too. So like just cranking out those, like I had exterior ads that I was running with me just having like a baseline understanding of how to do that stuff. And I, I was I getting heard, success. So. I, I'll just be honest. Like, and, and I'm just going to give you this cause I want to help you dude. I, I think that you have potential here the way you're sitting. I can already tell that you're starting to systemize that. I just think you're playing small. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. You're just playing small. I don't know why, but you have jobs lined up. You have two guys that barely know how to paint. And you're just like in the trenches with them. You need to cut that out. You know, you need to just get on Indeed and start bringing in people and keeping your standard high. Your your product is the people. And if you're just letting people come through that, you know, been with us for six months, can't figure out how to spray. Like, should he really be with you? You know, should he really be? Are you trying to get to a million? Because it won't work. You know, like a crew leader should have been in your business weeks ago somebody that has skill and you need to be serious about that. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, I want you to win and you got to start taking this seriously. You have jobs lined up. You have the potential to have a million dollar business. Stop playing small, spend the money, make the investment, run the ads, get on the videos. It, it, this isn't easy, dude. You know, business is not easy. This isn't just like you, you have the potential to make a lot of money. And a lot of impact. And if you have a team that is substandard, get them out. You are not going to succeed with people that don't take it upon themselves to grow. And early on, it was cool. 
you know, you probably had, they were cool guys and they, they helped you out, but it's like, dude, now you got to fill the right seats if you want to win. And, and it's not so much just winning or losing. It's, do you want to go back to being an employee? And this is the advice that I tell myself, Tanner, do you want to go back to selling cars? Do you want to go back right. to managing the freaking restaurant? No. Okay. Is this person that valuable to you that they're, they're not taking it serious enough to, to, to protect you from that when you're looking out for them every single week and you're having to make up for their mistakes, get them out. And then find the right people, dude. Your success is 100% dependent on how good you are at recruiting the right help. It's like every sports team in the world, dude. That is their focus every single season. How can we get the right people in the right positions? And the ones that do it really well win championships. And the ones that don't lose their job. Yep. Nope. I think uh, my next step is hiring a crew leader probably a crew leader and then one other person who has the experience. So just do, would I you hit you two different two, ads? A crew leader you ad and a, brother, you need two people that, that want to be crew leaders that come in and okay. battle for it. <laughs> I mean, that that's how we got to be, dude. You have got to get serious about this coming up the exterior season and you got to get good at attracting talent. You got to get to a point where two people are battling for this opportunity and make it clear to them. We're looking for the best of the best. And come in, th feel it, making it feel big, right? It is a big opportunity. I think you're going to be very successful. I'd rather just it be sooner than later. If you make a million dollars over the course of 50 years, that's not very much money. But if you make a million dollars in a month, you're rich. Well, it's, it just depends on how quickly you, you, you get this. And I'm telling you, man, you need to get some crew leaders in there. And you really need to press the people that you have to see if they're serious or not. And if they're not, man, part ways because they're just dragging you down. Yeah. Yeah, I think I appreciate all the advice, man. And I think uh, the two crew leader, like the two people who could kind of battle out as crew leaders, get some experience in here, get some guys seeing where they, how they want to come in and, and really show that they can take on these jobs. I don't have to be anywhere near them. And then I can just worry about selling and getting more stuff on the books. Selling. Recruiting. That's what I'm the best at. Like, that's what I'm the best at anyway. Is is the sales part and and getting all that stuff together. Like, I'm an okay painter. I'm not right. that great. I don't need to be on the jobs. Like, I'm here to sell, and I just need to get my crew ready and and get them hired in. And there wouldn't be too much training at all. Bringing in somebody who's been doing it for you know ten so years and kind of yeah, let them loose. You're good at selling. You figured out you have a good brand. You're a leader. You know, you have all the tangibles just, or the intangibles just at this stage. It's now it's about refining. And this is a theme that you're going to go through throughout the entire duration of your business is that you have something that works. You have to identify, is this working well or is this inadequate? Right. And if you think about your production from my short time with you, your production sucks. Your team yeah. doesn't know what they're doing. You're having to overcome all of their mistakes. You're trying to run around town, trying to build this business. And you have this huge bottleneck that would at one point worked at one point. It was okay. Now you're getting some good reputation. You're getting some more traction and it's not working anymore. This is a theme that's going to happen in marketing and production and in sales and in administration. Something is going to, you're going to have a process that you put in place that's going to work for a little bit. You got to go back and rip out the wiring and put in something stronger to sustain the growth and keep the momentum of the business going. Right. And right now we have this big bottleneck in our product, right? Think about this. So I look at it like drip jobs, right? The software, it, it, that is the, that is the product, right? And the more people that sign up for it, the more it forces us to change things and optimize things and create more server space so it works faster and better and better. It's consistent and never-ending improvement in order to keep scaling, right? So that production process has to go. I personally think from this talk with you, if you have people that have been with you for six months and can't figure it out and don't make you feel confident, they're just going to hold you back. You need people that know what they're doing. And if you like them as, as people, I'm sure they're good people, you need to figure out how to discern that, man. You got to set these actionable results. Say, hey, man, look, you've been with us for six months. I'm not feeling like you're giving me your all. And you got to be tough. That's business, yeah. man. Sometimes entrepreneurship looks, looks sweet from the outside. I've had some really tough conversations with people that I've built long relationships with. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to let one person create a situation where the team drowns 
or I drown. I'm the one. I'm providing for your family, dude. Like you got to look out for me. That's the mentality, right? This is a mutual thing. So, like I said, you're playing small. Get some hires in. Honestly, it's March 8th. I think you should have a crew leader within two weeks. I think you need to have somebody on your job site checking him out, vetting him, and making sure that he's up to standard. And if he's not, get rid of him and get another one. And until you figure yeah. out how to do that in a consistent way, it's going to be very hard for you to scale a W-2 model. And you have to, you have to gain respect from your team. They got to know that Patrick has no tolerance because you're looking out for your customer's best interest right? Mm -hmm. Yes. You might be working in some empty interiors where you can get away with some things, but that's not always going to be the case, Patrick, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> you and I both yeah, know that. It's only, it's only, yeah, it's only about half of them now. So about half, right? So yeah. you have customers that are watching, you have mistakes that are probably happening that are frustrating. Am I off base here? No, no, I think you're Good. pretty much dead on. Yeah. I've been through it. Right. So you have to firm up, right? Set the standard. You are the standard, but you can't put yourself in a position where you're working. That has got to go or you won't get beyond 400,000. You won't. There's no way. It ain't happening. Yeah. So if you have plans for a million, say goodbye to them until you stop painting and you put people in the position to paint. Good? Yes. Awesome. Good deal. Was this helpful for you? Oh, very much, man. I appreciate it a lot. Please give me an update. I would love to hear how this works out for you. Thank you, my friend. It's great meeting you. Um, if you want to jump on any time in the near future, I'd love to hear um, what happened. Yeah, let me get my uh, let me get my team kind of shirt up, and I'll jump back on and give you some updates here in like a month, man. Looking forward to it, man. Let's Thanks for your support. See you, buddy.